Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro channel and to part two of the Compact Presario 5522 restoration series. Uh, in the previous part we looked at a couple of hardware issues, one of them came as a bit of a surprise, but uh, I think we've sorted all that out. So in this part, we'll be looking at the software restoration. So if you haven't seen part one, I definitely recommend checking that out first. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with the Compaq Quick Restore CDs and that presented a bit of a challenge as we'll soon find out. Now I guess it's probably possible to just install a copy of Windows 95 or 3.1 and you know try and find the drivers for this machine but having the original software in there kind of plays into the whole nostalgia factor uh, for me in this machine. So let's power this thing on and see where I got up to. As I mentioned in the first part of this series, I couldn't get my camera to sync with the refresh rate of this CRT. So if you're looking at it thinking that it looks a little bit odd, well, that's because it does. You're not actually seeing the CRT itself. I managed to get a direct capture out of this thing, which also disables the internal CRT. I mean, it is running, but it's not displaying any image. And that means everything around the back of this machine is all pretty jank at the moment. But uh, we'll get into how that all works later on in the video. The first thing I want to do, of course, is restore this original software. So I've already got the boot disk in the disk drive, which should bring up uh, the Compact Quick Restore software. And then all we need is a copy of the Compact Quick Restore CD. I uh, managed to find this one on archive.org and it said it was for the 5500 to 9500 series Presario. So in theory, it should work with this machine. In practice, as we're about to see, not quite. And the boot floppy that it's running off is actually contained on this disc as well. So you can actually use the CD to create the boot floppy to boot the CD. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit more soon enough. Right, so we need to stick this in the CD-ROM drive. Throw that in there. Cool, so, so far so good. Everything looks fine here. Legal notice, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all we need to do is throw in our serial number, which is on the other side of this machine. And I mentioned in part one that I actually wrote the serial number on top of the CD-ROM drive. That's just because I had this thing open at the time that I was playing with it when I was trying to restore all this software so I didn't have to constantly be doing this. 7547. That's our serial number. Let's continue. And we get this computer may not be supported by quick restore. Make sure you've entered the correct serial number, which I already checked multiple times previously. So um at this point I was a bit stuck because I was like well this is supposed to be the restore disk for this machine, isn't it? So I headed back to archive.org and downloaded a whole bunch of other quick restore CDs. So trying again with another quick restore disk, which is slightly different. It actually asks you to set up your language options. We get to the same screen asking for a serial number. Let's see how this one goes. <laughs> This looks a lot more promising. It's actually identified our machine as a 5522, and I'm guessing this is the Australian model because, well, it's in Australia. Let's give this a go. Happy days. Uh, yeah. Although it identified the machine correctly, it wants me to insert a different CD-ROM. And looking around on Google and archive.org, I could not find this quick restore part number 185505-001. So I was so close at this point, but yet seemingly so far. And of course, there is no way around this because when I enter that serial number, that's what I get. And uh, the only other option is to just exit back out to DOS, which uh, isn't really helpful at all. So I went ahead and found yet another quick restore disc, this time for the Presario 524, which is what I had growing up. I figured, well, you know, they're practically the same machine. Surely it's going to work this time. And the 524 version of quick restore looks very much Windows 3.1 like, I guess, because it's slightly older. Uh, so let's throw our serial number in one more time. 
And we get this computer may not be supported by a quick restore. So at this point I had a disk that appeared to be for this machine but wouldn't recognize the serial number. A disk that did recognize the serial number but then asked for a different disk in order to continue. And a disk that I know was for a very similar machine to this but again uh, didn't accept my serial number. So I went ahead and downloaded a few more and also tried to merge some of these disks with other disks in the hopes that somehow I could get it to recognize the serial number and also restore the correct software. That didn't happen though. So the next step was to actually start poking around on these disks and see if I could work out if something was wrong with my serial number or if I could find out what serial numbers these things were going to accept. I started out looking at the disks that recognized my serial number but wouldn't let me proceed any further in the hopes that maybe I could glean some information from this. But uh, looking around these folders, there is not much of interest. This particular application here is a DOS application and that creates the boot floppy for this particular quick restore disk. So it is possible to create one of these. Obviously it doesn't work under Windows, but uh, maybe you could do it in DOSBox. The database folder probably has the most interesting files. We'll take a look at that in a sec. Uh, the final folder just appears to have the install files depending on which computer you've got. And of course mine isn't one of those. Uh, quick Restore looks to be, well, it just runs the Quick Restore application and the Tools folder contains a batch file that basically just opens the boot disk application. And finally we've got the Windows folder and this just seems to set up the environment for running the Quick Restore program. So anyway, back to the database folder, we can see that there are some databases in here. So if we open up something like the SKU model database, I was hoping that there'd be some just plain text in here. And while there is a little bit, the rest of the file just seems to be encoded in some kind of other format. So I couldn't really work out any information from this particular disk, but I thought I might be on the right path to figure out how all this serial number stuff works and how the disk determines whether or not it will support my machine. So I popped in the 5500 to 9500 restore disk in the hopes that I'd find something more useful there. We can see that it's pretty much got the same folders and the database folder contains a few less files, but we still do have the SKU model DB. Let's open this one up. And once again, we have a bit of plain text up the top here, but if we scroll down a bit further, you can see it seems to list a bunch of different models. There's the Presario CDTV 978, uh, the CDS 982, the CDS 524, which is the one that I had growing up, uh, the 5528, which is very close to the model that we've got here, the 5522, but not quite. And unfortunately, the one that's missing from this is indeed the 5522. What I was curious about was the numbers before the name of each system. I wondered if somehow there's an identifier that ties into the serial number somehow. So I started poking around at some of the other files. And if we look at the FAM SKU, you can see once again, we've got some plain text up here and this little bit of text in here. And you might notice that these strings of numbers seem to look pretty close to these sorts of strings. In fact, if we do a search for 214150009 in the other file, we do get a match. We've got HRL 214150009. So it would appear that these numbers match up to whatever SKU and model we have in this database. So I went looking through the rest of these databases and couldn't find any reference to these HRL or HSA and whatever, but I did recall that my serial number has a very similar set of digits. If we look at the numbers from my machine, we can see 7547HRK6. And it would appear from this database that we have three letters followed by a single number. So HRL5 could potentially replace the HRK6 that I have. And if these databases are anything to go by, that should be the serial number for the Presario 5528, which is incredibly similar, if not exactly the same as the 5522. Dare I say the 5528, the 22 and the 26 may have just been sold in different regions. For instance, the 5526 model seems to share the same specs as this machine, but it was obviously sold in Japan. So as I couldn't find anything else useful in those database files, I thought, well, maybe we'll just take my serial number and just merge it with the other product ID for the 5528, see if it works. 
And so the moment of truth, will my serial number merged with the product ID for the 5528 work with this disk? Apparently, yes, it has identified it as a 5528, close enough. And this is further than we've ever gotten before. Uh, there's no data on the hard drive anyway, so let's do it. Well, it would certainly appear that this part is working. Now, this took me about two days to work out and pretty much I got to the point where it started installing stuff and then I thought, okay, well, hopefully I can make a video out of this because uh, watching me do this over the course of two days isn't that exciting, but hopefully I've condensed it down into something interesting. The big question is, will this machine boot afterwards? Because that's the one thing I haven't tested yet. And will it bring back any memories? <laughs> While we wait for this thing to reinstall, let's go back to the serial number because I pretty much worked out how all this seems to work. The first digit, and this is just through trial and error, can be pretty much anything. It doesn't seem to matter what you put in there. The second digit needed to be between five and nine. The third digit can be between zero and five. And the fourth digit could be between zero and nine, except when the third digit was a five in which case you could only have zero, one, or two. Obviously these next three are for the product ID and it seems the final digits could be absolutely anything as well. Looking back over at these digits, you may have already worked out what they are. These machines were released from 1995. So it would seem that this final digit is the last digit of the year. So 95 to 99. And these two digits form the week, which is why five will only accept a two, a one, or a zero, because you can only have 52 weeks in a year. I'm not actually sure if double zero really worked. That might be an exception. It might have to go zero, one in that case. So if you're ever dealing with the quick restore software for one of these 90s Presarios and you need a serial number, your safest option is probably 0952, so the last week of 1999, and then the product ID, most of which you can find on the older Quick Restore CDs, but the newer ones seem to have that all encrypted. And then for the final four digits, you can just have a bunch of zeros. So I could have easily just used 0592HRL50000 for this particular setup. And for anyone interested, these are the product IDs and their matching models that I managed to identify. So for instance, if you had a Presario CDS 526, all you would need to do is put 0952HQZ20000 as your serial number, if you're missing the serial number for whatever reason. Of course, you do need to find the correct quick restore disk, and for that, well, obviously I can't help you because I can't even find the one for my own model. If you're lucky, it might recognize your serial number, and if it doesn't work, it might at least tell you which quick restore CD you need. And here we are. Apparently our system has been restored, so all we need to do is take out the floppy disk and restart the computer. This is a little bit awkward because obviously I can't see what's going on on this display, but uh, the actual video capture is coming from the laptop, which is over in front of me. So never mind that I'm looking over here to see what's going on over there. Starting Windows 95. Huh. Well, one thing I can immediately say is this machine is definitely different from the one we had growing up because it came with Windows 3.1 pre-installed. I think it had an upgrade CD for Windows 95 and a couple of others. I think it had like Encarta and King's Quest 6, which was a great game at the time. I love that game. But yeah, it definitely didn't have Windows 95 pre-installed. We've got an unknown device. Um, yeah, sure. I have a startup sound. Welcome to your new compact Presario. Welcome to your new compact Presario. You made a smart choice. Oh, and I have an echo. Why do I have an echo? Engineered like no other, compact PCs are the best-selling computers in the world. Wow. <laughs> it's so 90s. And should yeah. you ever encounter a problem, service. you have someone you can call day or night. 
now is for the kinds of things you can do with your Presario. Compact Presario. It puts a world of possibilities in your hands. With so many great things to do, let's get started. Let's do it. Do we know how to use our mouse? Oh, I've got to press one or two on the keyboard. You'd think they'd... I oh, know you can do that with the mouse. All right, well, clearly I know how to use my mouse. Uh, well, let's have a quick lesson. Oh, there's no voiceover stuff. Press enter. Ah, uh, this is all boring. Stuff. Yes, cool. Single clicking. Ding dong. <laughs> of course that was going to happen. Oh, what? I can't just let myself in? Well, nobody's friggin' answering. Clicking and dragging. Oh, the house has got no windows. What if I put the door over there? That is not allowed. If I put that window over there, that is also not allowed. And the same. Yeah, built a house. That's it. Oh, I guess I don't have a scroll wheel, so fair enough. It's time to register. Uh, Why? Well... Even in the 90s, they wanted you to register. We can get free software. Just click here to register your new compact computer and unlock your free... Better register. Connect the computer to a phone. Uh, well, there is a modem in there. I don't know if that's going to work though. Dial ups are a little bit hard to come by these days, even in Australia, finally. Uh, maybe we can register by phone. Ah, oh, just gives me a phone number. I wonder if that phone number is still active. Oh, we can play it again. That'd be fun. To get the most out of your new compact Presario, take a look into the amazing world of online services. So hang on, your next stop, America's most exciting online service. Oh, not AOL. So I'm guessing perhaps the 5528 is the US model and the 5526 is the Japan, possibly greater Asia model and maybe the 22 here is like Australia, New Zealand. Actually it did tell us, didn't it? Australia, New Zealand, Singapore and Thailand were the other options. Use your new compact Presario to explore America online free. Click here to begin your journey. I do not want to begin my journey. Pretty sure it would end quite abruptly anyway. <laughs> A 
just keeps going. Everyone has their own way to work and play. So whether you're a novice or an experienced user, an adult or a child, your compact Presario offers an environment that is right for you. You have four environments to choose from. Windows Program Manager provides the most flexible computing environment available. So there is 3.1 on there? Tabworks. Tabworks. Provides a That's ready-made I mean, structure for organizing your files and programs. It's like flipping through a three-ring organizer. Activity Manager, a compact exclusive. Here is where people of all ages, regardless of computer experience, can play and become productive instantly. Activity Manager makes it easy to find and run the software you need to perform dozens of different tasks. The perfect starting place, especially for first-time computer users. Kids love Launchpad. It's filled with surprises, delights, and zany sounds for children of all ages. Zany. Here, youngsters find it easy to organize their own files and software. And special privacy features let you keep kids away from your files and programs. So children are free to explore while you get peace of mind. So keep the kids away from your porno. It's easy to sample all these choices. That's why Compaq created the Presario Gallery. In the Presario Gallery, use your mouse to select an environment you would like to explore. Simply hold down your left mouse button and move the mouse to explore as much as you want. Discover more by moving your mouse over objects you see in the gallery. You will get a brief demonstration on how they are used and tips to help you use your Presario for work and play. Remember, you have the freedom to choose with your compact Presario computer and the Presario gallery. To get started now, and later if you want to return to the gallery, simply use your mouse to click on the red cube. Now, explore and enjoy. I will. So now can I use this? Oh, I should have replayed it. Come on, don't break on me now. What did I do? Doesn't seem to be accessing any of the drives. All right, let's go for a restart. We will not be watching that again. Hopefully. It's really locked up. Uh, no. I don't remember that cursor on the far right being up there before. Ah, oh, okay. We're just going into Windows 95 setup this time. Yeah, yeah. I don't have one of those. Do I? No. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the 95 product key has been hacked a long time ago. Let's just find one. In fact, here's the key format. So first three digits are day of the year. So we can say it's the first day of the year. Uh, next two digits are the year. We can say it's 1995. OEM, there's two zeros apparently, and then five random numbers, the sum of which are divisible by seven, and then a bunch more random numbers. So, well, seven's divisible by seven, and a bunch of sevens are divisible by seven, and random numbers are seven. Easy. Is it gonna crash again? No, maybe not. Yeah. 
System transferred. Still right here. So yeah, I don't remember that sort of intro video from our machine. It did say it had program manager in there, but then it seems to be giving me Windows 95, so I don't know what's going on there. It did also mention Tabworks, which I do remember from, from Windows 3.1. It was kind of like it was helpful in Windows 3.1 because obviously in Program Manager it's you know it's not you don't have a start menu or anything like that but in Windows 95 I don't imagine it would be very useful. All right well that is not where I'm located I'm in one of these almost. Uh, I don't want to create system disks right now. 30 disks! <laughs> no? Start up disk. If Windows 95 has problems, I guess we should create one of them. This is a bit confusing. Do you click that? Do you click next? Especially for like a first time computer user, like what am I supposed to do? Oh, okay. Clicking next brings me back to the previous menu, almost like what the back button would be used for. Label the disk, Windows 95 startup disk. Yeah, I'll probably forget. And we wait. Oh, finally. I think it did a slow format. Imagine creating 30 disks like that. I took about three or four minutes. So yeah, it kind of just leaves you in here. Like, what if people start poking around at this stuff? They could easily stuff up their installation. I guess I'm supposed to cancel that. So yeah, going next from here takes you back to the previous menu, which defaults to trying to create 30 disks. So if you hit next on that, you're going to be creating a lot of disks. Uh, <laughs> cancel should probably be more like exit in this case. Oh, and it's going to remind me every five days. Uh, we can change that to zero, apparently. No thank you. Good advice. I think we've had enough tours. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. That's not the time. How rude. Oh, and this doesn't boot up with number lock enabled. Things we just expect these days. Oh, that's 100% Windows 95. Compact Windows 95. Oh, we get the red box thing. Is it gonna crash again? Do I dare? Confused about computer terminology? Yes, I am. AC, is that? Okay, yeah, I wouldn't really call that computer terminology, but all right. Uh, well, at least it seems pretty comprehensive. What's DRAM? Yeah, fair enough. Let's say pen park. All right, cool. Well, there's a lot in there. Let's not go into that. What else have we got? Safety and comfort guide, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. Product tutorial, it's probably one of those videos that we already watched, as is that. Learn how to use the gallery, what is? So does this, ooh, oh, okay. All right, that's the kids environment. It's a bit touchy. Windows desktop, that's where we just were. Tabworks. So they did include Tabworks with Windows 95. Yeah, am I supposed to double click? Come on. What color mode is this running in? Ah, oh, the Windows 95 version will be available soon. This is like just ported from the Windows 3.1 version. I remember it being vertical though, not this sort of 
horizontal. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, like that. Uh, <laughs> there is a lot of uh, bloatware by the looks of it. Uh, certainly don't remember having this many tabs. Yeah, that that is pretty much tab works. And you've got like a little quick access thing over here. And go into file manager, which is kind of funny because Windows 95 is where they introduce file explorer, my computer, Windows Explorer. Tabworks is not as useful in Windows 95. So let's just close that. Maybe. What is this? Speech mail that I'm not allowed to see. Oh, you can piss off then. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. No. <laughs> then why even have these things down here? Can I close that? Yes. I'm not allowed to close this. Got to use the call minder to close another program. All right. Information center. All right, let's not mess around. What games have we got? Okay, nothing too special. Magic carpet? Pro Football 95. Free software. It's got Load Runner. Yes, that is one of the games that the Our Compact came with. What is this? I haven't registered because I can't register. No, this is just this thing again. It's not going to work. Fine. Dial away. Oh, I'm not filling that out. Yes, I am. Be reminded in 14 days. Oh, lucky me. But I want to play Load Runner. Oh, you guys and your passwords. One, two, three, four. Needs to be six characters. Five, six. Wait, really? <laughs> really? Why did they even bother then? So we can play Load Runner now, right? Yes, we can. <laughs> Sierra. Still got it. Alright, well, I think this is just going to be the rest of the video then. It's a bit slow. It's the bad guys. Increase game speed, F6, okay. Still a bit of that. Ah, now we're talking. Whoops. That's what happens when you increase the game speed. Be using the number pad. Yes.
There's a bad guy. Okay, we're gonna stop this before I just stay here for the rest of the day. The sound seems a little bit off. I'm not sure what that is. It's a bit odd. So yes, that was one of the, the bundled games that uh, came on the 524 as well. And I remember that little guy coming in and going, Sierra. And I also remember the even more incredible machine was another game that I'm pretty sure came with our system. And I'm not seeing it here. Oh, I can play a demo of SimCity 2000. Hmm. Um, no, that is not it. All right, apparently not. The face of life. Okay, well, um, that is, well, at least the 5528 quick restore not quite what I expected I was actually really hoping for Windows 3.1 and you know being as it is December we really should be playing around in DOS Windows 95 is I think the start of where they tried to just you know distance DOS pretend it didn't exist anymore so I mean it's there it's supported but you know you can sort of feel that shift away from pure DOS mode What's in here? It's just icons for those things. No executables, that's pretty rude. So, let's have a look. Display partition information. Alright, so we've got our primary DOS partition. Looks like it's also created a non-DOS partition. I think that's going to be the BIOS application for this machine, which is, obviously the machine's got a BIOS and it pretty much auto configures itself but there's a separate application uh, that's stored either on the hard drive or I'm pretty sure on a floppy disk to actually access the BIOS settings. I think that's what that non-DOS partition is. It's only four megabytes. How do we get to it? While the cursor is at the top right corner of the screen during boot up, press F10. Ah, oh, that's what that cursor was. Yeah, there it is. And I'm almost certain that wasn't there before when we didn't have anything installed on this machine. Hey! It's... Ah, oh, no mouse support. It's a bit rude. Fancy BIOS. For 19.95. Oh, now we have a mouse. Do we? No. Yes, yes. There we go. 5500 series, oh, can't do much in there. Pentium at 133 megabytes and 72 meg RAM. It can see our floppy drive and our hard drive. Doesn't show the um, CD-ROM, but that's fine. Ah, yes, number lock power on state. Turn that shit on. Okay. Yes, I want that number lock on. Hey, my number lock's on. Now, what else was in here? Does my computer need a checkup? Very exclusionary. <sighs> Place a blank tape cartridge in each tape drive unit. Wow. All right, let's not do that. I'm sure everything, well, it appears to be working fine. Remote pack. Create a diagnostics diskette. I should probably do that just in case. Right, well I ended up with a diagnostics diskette and a setup BIOS diskette. So one of them just runs the diagnostic part. The other one's got the sort of BIOS setup on there. So I guess if I ever manage to wipe it from the hard drive or lose it, at least I can get into the BIOS now. Well, it does boot into Windows 95 pretty quick. It's just a shame we've got this bloatware, which probably slows it down a bit. What's that? It's 
turn that off. I don't want that auto starting with Windows. Can I just, yes. So as much as I kind of asked for the bloatware, um, quickly realize how annoying it becomes. Now we're set to 256 colors. And either my capture device or this video card doesn't support 1024 by 768. It's probably my capture device, which has now shifted considerably. That didn't go very well. Oh, that's better. At least we can switch to 16-bit color. Yeah, go on. Could have gone to 32. <sighs> that stupid thing is there again. Go away. Well, there are certainly some things about this machine that I absolutely love and some things that, well, kind of disappointed about. Uh, but it is, it's very close to what we had back in the day. Um, I think I need to play with it to set it up how I like it. Also might be possible to restore the, uh, the CDS524 software back on this machine. I mean, I've got the restore disks and I can easily, you know, create the serial number now that I know how they work. Yeah. Would really like to see it running Windows 3.1 with Tabworks and the even more incredible machine and all the other stuff I remember. But um, well, I, maybe we should leave this video here because I'm sure it's quite long by now. Um, but that could be something we might do in the future. Try and make this machine as close as possible to a 524, at least on the software side. Um, I think that is it for this one. We should we should. We should stop now before I get carried away and we're here for hours. So thank you all for watching. Uh, a huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. Um, if you want to do the same, links to that down in the video description. I'm clearly becoming very tired and forgetting what I'm supposed to be saying right now. So um, yes, definitely time to end this video. And um, well, I guess, yeah, let me know if you'd like to see um, the 524 software on this machine, see if we can make that work as well. Uh, but yeah, let's let's leave it here. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Bye. Oh yeah, we didn't even get into how the whole video capture thing's working. Uh, basically, I just disconnected the VGA cable, which is obviously internal in this machine that runs from the little front door to board up to the neck board on the CRT. And it's basically the standard VGA pinout just with a different connector. So I just unplugged it from the netboard and used a couple of DuPont connectors to uh, hook all that up to a VGA cable once I figured out which wire was which. So um, that's how that works. And that's why we don't have anything on the actual display. So I need to go ahead and uh, hook all that back up, um, especially now that this video is, I guess, done for now. Um, and then I can actually use this machine how it was intended rather than staring at what's going on on this thing on my laptop over there. So that's how that worked. And um, I don't know, if you, if, if you want me to go into that, all the 524 stuff, let me know. We'll, we'll have another look at it in a future video. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Thank you all for watching. Bye. That's it. You people have stood in my way long enough. I'm going to clown college.